Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dennis. Welcome to Patina Code. This is So You Want to Build an AD. I'm cold right now, I'm done. Come on. Hello again, everybody, and thank you once again for tuning in for this edition of So You Want to Build an AD, powered by LS Fabrication. And today we're just doing some of the interior mock-up stages. So before we go with putting the sound deadener in and getting all of the stuff lined out to be ready to do the outside body work, we got to mock up what we need to do. So the way I do upholstery is by way of installing studs to the firewall because that'll hang our backing board. So we got our template paper out here today. We got our backing board. So I'm tracing, making out templates. And then I'm gonna go through just putting in the studs, kind of like where I welded in studs for the interior wires to hang from. And the whole key to it is so that we don't have any external bolts, screws, or anything protruding through the firewall because I want the firewall shaved. You guys already know that. So in order to make all this fit up, the way that I want it to be and to keep a clean look on the outside of the truck. Once again, I'm welding studs to the inside here of the firewall to hang our interior upholstery. We're getting really close on getting to the point of working on the chassis and then that's going to be a whole nother set of things coming off. So what I'm going to show you today is how you can go about using your regular five inch diameter gauge if you're not going back with the original gauge replacement, we're using some auto meter gauges. There's a way that you can use your old gauge if you have it to produce the mounting ring so your gauge will fit in there for the five inch diameter speedo and quad gauge. And it'll save you a couple bucks if you have the original gauges to take apart to use the guts from them. So we're gonna get into that and then we're gonna get into how I'm gonna go about mocking up this interior. And that's gonna lead us into getting the cab finally just paint it with some basic rust-oleum black paint let that dry then come back here and do the sound deadener the carpet and everything will go in after it's time to do the final assembly because we're going to be doing a lot of sanding and grinding and cutting back on the bondo and whatnot so we don't want the carpet in there just yet but to have the sound deadener down That'll be fine. We can cover it with our welding blankets and stuff like that to keep it clean. And then when we're done, we just rip the blankets off, hit it with some alcohol, clean it up, get it ready to accept the carpet. So let's get right into what we got going on here today. So all of this is pretty, you know, it's pretty simple stuff. We use paper and this is some plastic that we have here. This is the backing board. We will get this covered with glue when it's time to put the fabric on and we'll wrap this in the fabric. But before we can do that, we have to make out how it's gotta go on here. And as you see, we have our template paper here. This is the toughest side to do because we have that bracket there for our heater. And so right now we just got it uh, fit. We got it going good on this side and it's a little choppy over here, but we can uh, figure this out. It's not really that big of a deal. And it's just a matter of realizing how much more you need and then transferring that to the template over on the other side to make it out of the backboard. So I'm really satisfied with what we got on this side over. So I'm gonna work on getting this straightened out. So we're just gonna follow our line that we have and I'm cutting a little bit outside of that line. And I love this backing board. It's actually a little sheet of plastic. I say little, it's nearly not that little. It was at one time four by four. And uh, I have quite a few of these. And how I got them, how I came across these things was by way of the job that's next to my building is uh, where Coca-Cola brings all the tea and the Powerade. Anyway, long story short, 
truck driver was backing up and all the skids were stacked on the tail of the trailer. And for some reason, he just jammed the brakes and then he went forward. And as soon as he went forward, five skids come falling out the back of the truck. And these, these slip sheets, I guess is what they are. You know, they were between each of the pallets and all these cans. It was, it was weird because that day they, he had these, the mini cans of soda that they used. They told me that they bottle those up and they sell them to the cruise line. So the mini cans of soda and shit like that. Man, there had to have been a thousand cans out on the, on the driveway. And the guy, you know, the truck driver was like, oh my God. And one of the workers come out after that and he's seen all the, the mess. And he's like, hey man, if you want any of these cans, you can take them, you can scrap them. I was like, man, I ain't got time to pick this shit up. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's where these, these slip sheets came from. So now we got our template on here and now we have to go through the whole process of cutting to fit and cutting to get everything right. And we just now to make sure that we have the lines marked that's gonna pass up through under the legs of this bracketry here. So I'm just gonna put a couple marks and then we'll cut it, but we won't cut it all the way. We want this to fit up there as tight as possible. And then once we do the upholstery with the fabric, you know, you can always take the fabric a little further over than it needs to be to cover up, you know, any part that might still be able to be seen. So right here you see we have just a little bit cut and that's gonna go up. And that's what we needed to do was go all the way up to here. And we wanna make it to this line right here. And it's best to do just a little bit at a time. You don't wanna get ahead of yourself because as the panel goes up, it might need to shift a little this way or a little that way. So just doing a little bit at a time, taking your time and you'll get the proper fit when doing you know things like this. So when this is all done, we're gonna end up cutting it back because we want it to be here. And then the center piece that's gonna bow over this part of the firewall will come from where we got that stud there, it'll latch on there and then come across and we'll have another stud here. And then it'll be like that. So it'll be three separate panels, one here, one there, and then of course one over there. So here's a quick look at the finished product, starting from the driver's side, there's the center, there's the passenger side. Now when it's time to upholster, this one here will be upholstered on the vehicle simply because it's split so that it can go around this bracket that I made up. And it won't be that big of a deal. We'll just get it set up on there like it is now and then have the glue already on it and then work the fabric to where it can go over the splits there. That way you won't see the firewall. So the center piece and the driver's side piece, those will be upholstered out of the vehicle. And right now we just got to go and get to the other side. I'll reach in, pull this close, and then trace out the little hump there for the steering column to pass through. And the little studs that I use, they're, you know, they're a little Allen head, 10 32nd. And I went up and got some of these acorn nuts, chrome ones. The most I ever paid for a set of nuts, man, I paid. I got 10 of them and they were $1.80 a piece. So 18, well, after taxes and shit, 20 bucks <laughs> for some acorn nuts. They're chrome ones. But, you know, I just gotta have a little dress up. Gotta have a little bling on the truck so we can splurge a little bit here and there on some stuff. But that's how that it will stay fastened down. Now, I am going to actually want it to be you know, press down. So what I'm gonna do is put a nut, I'm gonna take this off, of course, but then we're gonna have to put another 10 32nd nut on this. And these uh, acorn nuts, they're pretty deep, but I wanna whack off the thread there so that I can get this to actually be applying pressure to the panel. So like I said, we'll get a 10 32nd nut, we'll put it, right here, then I'll get the cutoff wheel, whack this, and then back the nut off, and then that'll keep the threads right in order to put your 
nut back on. So we've ran our 10, 30 seconds nut down on our stud here. And now we need to take the angle grinder and just cut the stud down. Let's see here, this is gonna be tight, but I think we can pull it off without damaging the back and board here, hold on. that done now you just take and back the nut off and it'll straighten out the threads on the end and just run it back and forth a little bit make sure and there it is so that's how we're going to go about trimming back the studs that fit the backing board to the firewall because as I said the acorn nut it's deep but it's not deep enough to take the whole length of the stud that we have welded on here so that's why we got to trim them back and we want the acorn nut to act as a fastener to where it's going to put pressure on the upholstery once it's on there so that everything will lay tight against the firewall and not be protruding or have any uneven surfaces and that's why we want to cut them back as short as we can so that way you can dial the acorn nut down that would increase pressure or you can back it off to release a little pressure so that everything will stay even there it is guys all done we have our interior panels done now we just have to get them upholstered and that will come down the road now we're going to move on to getting this gauge cluster set up using this ring from an original old gauge we got one of our rings in and i'm going to show you how you can go about using the old part of an original gauge to accommodate the size of the new gauge so I got the auto meter gauge, they're five inch in diameter, but they will not fit this hole. They do make the brackets that you would need to hold the gauge in place. There's a couple people also that are making some out of billet aluminum and whatnot, but if you're doing the budget build type thing, I'm gonna show you how you can get away with using this part from the old gauge to work with the five inch diameter gauge. It doesn't have to be an auto meter gauge, any five inch diameter gauge. This is gonna work for that so now I'm gonna show you how you can use the old gauge if you have it to make the bezel ring in this opening so I'm gonna run with the auto meter 5 inch diameter quad gauge it's 5 inches but it's not enough to fill the hole once you take this out so what you're gonna to want to do is get a flathead screwdriver which we have here and just gonna pry these up. See how that's crimped right there? So you get that loose and it doesn't take much. You just kind of pry it off and it's just crimped in various spots. There'll be four, maybe five spots where they've crimped it down, but it's around the gauge. And then eventually you'll come to the point where you can pull this loose. And how I'm doing this is we're sticking the blade of the screwdriver right there on that crimp. And that's what you keep hearing me slip off of it. So we're just trying to pry that back. Just like that. <laughs> okay, so once you have that done, you want to be careful because... That's true glass in there. That's glass. And you don't want to break it. And some of the purists that might see this would be like, Oh, you're defacing the gauge. Yeah, well, you know what? To send this gauge somewhere to have it redone, it costs you just as much to get a brand new set of gauges. Which, I, you know, and that's fine. I have no issue with that. But we're going to use what we got to get what we want. If somebody wanted this gauge... You know, they should have sent me a message and say, yo, I'll buy those gauges from you. So, since that never happened, we're going to continue on. So, you can separate it. Again, be careful, there's glass up here. There's a seal in here also. 
So what you're gonna be left is this, the original housing. And you can set it down, keep it for a moment, discard it, whatnot. And we're gonna pull this loose. And like I said, you gotta be careful because there's glass there. And it's still kind of hanging up just a bit. So we'll pry just a little bit more to get this joker loose. And you want to be careful doing this as well because, you know, this can be a sharp edge around the base of this. And what's falling out of there is the old seal. There's an old rubber seal. See that? Just came apart. So you got this part, which that's cool as hell. Like maybe you can incorporate this into your truck somewhere. This would be, if you had two of these, that would be badass for like a speaker cover. Yeah, you know, maybe a five inch speaker. You know, that'd be pretty dope. You know, they have this side showing. Anyway, man, my mind's always on that nonsense. So here's the glass. And the black that you see around it is the remnants from the rubber seal. What you're going to have left is this piece, the outer ring. And this is what we're going to use to make our bezel. You can see here the vast difference in... What we got so we have one of the bezels installed we have one that's not and it looks kind of weird when you look at it through the camera there so taking this bezel that we just took from an original gauge is going to help us with our five inch diameter gauge and i'm running this autometer brand gauge i love autometer that's the shit. you know to me my personal preference is autometer so we're going to stick this here where we already have one of the bezels installed and you see, boom, it sits right in there. It's perfect. It's nice. And what we'll do with the ring, we're going to paint it to match the dash so when it looks all flush and whatnot. Now there is a company, there's a couple companies, well actually Autometer has the bracket that you can use to fit behind this to expand the diameter of the gauge. Not a knock on Autometer. But why spend the money if you have the original gauge? If you don't have the original gauge, well, then you're going to have to spend money to get the brackets. But there's a couple of other aftermarket companies that make these as well. There's somebody selling a set of these on eBay, which they're pretty trick, actually. You have to where it bolts in using the existing bolts from when you had to undo the original gauge. Because when you took these out, you had these flanges and they were bolted in back here. Well, this guy's making a set of these rings that bolt on, and then you can get them with either three cuts in them, and one would be for the signal light for the left side, one in the middle for high beam, and then you would have another cut for an LED for the right signal. Anyways, they're trick. They're cool. They're not that expensive. I think he's asking like 100 bucks. I'm not sure. They're not that much money if you don't have this. But having this means you can have that fits in there perfectly. And the rest is history. You just put this in through the back side and sits up in there. My hands full there. And once you get that installed, crank the welder up. And you're going to be wanting to be on the lowest heat setting as possible because this is thin. This is, you know, <clears throat> I weld it that in. It's not moving. So we're going to do the same thing here. And how we're going to do it is weld the back of this. This little flange here will be welded to the extruded part here. There's a, a rise and then a stud coming out from where you would bolt the original gauge in too. So we're gonna weld this part of the gauge to that extruded part here where that thread is. And you take your time and work around the gauge. There's four spots, there's one, two, three, four. Once you get those welded in, then you can take it upon yourself as what I'm gonna do is fold this lip down, I'm gonna take the body hammer and smash it flat, and then we're just gonna every so often around the gauge until we get around here and we're satisfied with that. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and crank the welder and let you guys see me doing this. And I appreciate you guys, man. I know you guys know I'm not full of shit, but I still wanna show you, you know what I mean? That it can be done. And like when you wedge it in there, see it, it kind of, it wedges itself in there. So we have our little clamp here and we're applying pressure to the backside of this little bezel, drawing it to the dash. We got it set up and now it's going to be just a matter of cranking up the welder and welding this in place. It's going to be a bit of a challenge because on this side I was able to put the welder through here and weld and then eventually I laid on the floor and did it from up and under. It's going to be a little tougher. I might still lay in the floor and have to weld up this way just because it's the easiest way to go about doing that. But we do have the cross brace for the steering column and the dash brace to end the way, plus the handle for the <laughs> for the vent. So let's just, uh, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to check it out. I'm going to try to do it, you know, tack from the sides. Low heat, lowest setting, and just, uh, I don't know, I would say like a medium run out on uh, the wire speed. You don't want to get too crazy, and you want to hit it and go. Just psh, psh, psh. And of course, you got to skip around. This is really thin. So, let's see what we got. Let's see what we can do. from this point, and then if I got to crawl down in the bottom here and get the floor, that's got to be okay. I prefer not to. <laughs> Let me see. Maybe I can stick the welder through here. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, hell, we ain't got no problems. The only problem now is going to be making sure we get this right. Satisfied with what we got done there. Only thing left to do is hit it with the wire wheel to clean it up, get it looking like this. And it's ready to accept our gauge. Now your five inch diameter gauge fits in there. So the backing that holds the gauge in place will fit back here and it kind of wedges right under the slip. Add an extra support for the gauge this is welded in solid and it's gonna be pretty cool so we have the matching speedo which happens to be the um, satellite version to where you don't have to have the cable or anything like that so that's pretty cool and I don't have it out here because you know it's so dusty and whatnot but for demonstration purposes that's gonna be pretty I like it so We've covered a lot today. There's a couple other things that I want to show you. And really, they're, they're uh, real cool, easy things to do to dress up our truck. We're going to break out the LS Fabrication panels for the backside. So we got a closeout panel, and then we have speaker panels for the inner corners of this truck. And it just ties in with the whole LS Fabrication deal. So let's get those panels out, and I'm going to just set them up here, mock them up, let you guys see what they look like, because we are going to have to take them out so that we can do all the painting and all the sound deadener and all that cool shit. And then again, once it's time to reassemble the truck for the final time, when it's time to get it ready for the road, we're going to go through and put all of this back in. But that's the key. You've got to mock everything up now. That way, when you get to all the cool stuff, you don't mess anything up. Turned out nice.
Thanks for watching. Stay with me.